Welcome back to the Homeschool Advantage Podcast. I'm your host, Bex Buzzy. Today's guest is Carrie Ann Jelinek. She is the CEO of Sloth Dreams Books and Publishing Company. Slosh Dreams Books and Publishing Company specializes in providing engaging and informative social studies books for young learners in preschool and early elementary grades. Their books are tailored to meet the needs of educators and homeschool educators who are looking to teach their students about history, geography, culture, and other important social studies topics. Carrie Ann is an expert writer and educator, and she has carefully crafted each of the books to ensure that they are both educational and fun to read. So whether you're a teacher looking for new resources to enhance your classroom education, or a homeschooling parent seeking engaging material for your child, they have the books you need to bring social studies to life. In this episode, we talk about how Sloth Dreams Books and Publishing is a go-to educational vendor for relevant educational content for in-classroom or homeschool material curriculum. Also, how Carrie Ann single-handedly has written and illustrated over 110 books in the first year of being in business. And lastly, how Carrie Ann wanted a way to still educate kids while never having to go back to the classroom again. So go grab your coffee, go grab your tea and a pen and paper because you're not going to want to miss what Carrie Ann has to say. Let's get into the podcast. Say hello to our guests and tell us what is a fun fact about your industry that will really surprise our listeners. Hello, my name is Carrie Yan, and I'm the CEO and founder of Sloth Dreams Books and Publishing. And something that would surprise you is that there are not that many people in the industry that are writing social studies books for children. There are a lot of big companies that do so through National Geographic and things like that, but I'm focusing more on the social studies such as different countries around the world, animals from different countries. Some of the topics that I write about are are very unique to our brand and fit more in the category of Waldorf, Montessori, and homeschool education. I love that. Carrie Ann, you know, I feel like with throughout the years, the definition for social studies kind of changed. And and I as I was listening to you, I, I hear you using it the way it was meant to be used. <laughs> but I feel like throughout yes. the years, social studies just became another history class, which actually that's not it. Social studies is actually not another history class. I mean, it can be, but that's actually not the complete definition, the, the complete like, hmm. I guess what it really was meant to be. Can you kind of like um, unpack for our our listeners exactly what you meant by like social studies and everything? Absolutely. So social studies in, in our company is referring to, it could be holidays, teaching young children about Arbor Day, which was uh, yesterday, or Groundhog Day, or Valentine's Day, or the origins of where some of these holidays came from, like Cinco de Mayo. Um Also, it could be going into uh, books that do involve history. I'm in the process of writing one right now that's called uh, Ghirardelli, The World's Greatest Chocolatier. And it's going to be about the Ghirardelli man himself and the company that he created during the gold rush. So not only is it in story form, but it also teaches about the gold rush. It teaches about the importing from different countries during the gold rush. It just teaches so many different things, California history. And so it's really exciting to me to be able to write these kind of things that I'm interested in personally. And I know that kids have questions about these kind of topics as well. Wow. Um, I love that. You know, it, it just, as you were talking, all I heard was educational richness. Like in my mind, I'm like, this is just so rich. It's so like diverse. It's so in depth. And it's really what education is about, right? We don't just gloss over topics like we get into them. Like, and how beautiful, like what, you know, I love that chocolate. So like, I'm like, oh, maybe 
I want to read about that. You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, you stop I mean, and think yeah. About it. it's like every time I go there, it's like really exciting to read the wall, you know, about all the history of Domenico Ghirardelli and how it started. Like, that's fascinating to me. And then how it became what it is today, like the, the, just the migration of, of over time of how it's come to be what it is now is, is captivating to me. No, it's and, true. Uh, and, yeah. And I know that kids would be interested too, if they, if they sat down and you, just their parents said, you know, have you ever thought about this or, right, you know, and that's kind of stuff that my daughter asked me occasionally is, Mom, what does a what does the thing on the wall say? You know, so I read it to her. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and that's the thing. I what I what I'm loving right now is that you're literally highlighting the fact that you can take something that people don't think of as a potential for even a whole unit of learning as you know, and you're actually doing it. Like who who would think Gitarelli chocolate? would be the opportunity to teach on history, potentially teach on mm -hmm. economics, you know, the government, like who was in charge back then, like what was happening in the, in, you know, in, uh -huh. um, absolutely like all these different things. Like you don't realize like what you can actually learn, like, and you cross online chemistry, like what is the chocolate made out of? You know what I mean? You can learn the biology of things. It's really powerful when you stop and think like, wow, anything, I can, any, anything can be a lesson. Anything can teach as long as we're curious and we ask questions. So I love what you're doing. So what inspired you to create all this? Well, I started with uh, one single book that my daughter and I had been talking about for a long time about our gray cat named Mr. Peanuts. And he was just a wonderful animal and just such a sweet friend. And we thought, well, what would it be like? Because he was a rescue cat, we would often think, I wonder what he must have gone through before this. And so we made up all these very colorful stories about some of the things that he might have, have done. And, and they may have been silly, not so silly. But one of the ones that we wanted to write was called Hungry for Pancakes that he was really, really hungry. He just wanted to make pancakes on his own. And it oh, wow. ended up being a total catastrophe. And it was just <laughs> a very silly story. <laughs> I love that. No, so. but that's so cool. That's so creative. I love that. And what I was gonna just going to say from, from there, uh, you know, from that one book, I just, I really fell in love with the whole process of the, of illustrating and writing and, you know, designing the book cover and the whole process of self-publishing became just like a whole world to me. I didn't want to go back into the classroom mm. from being an educator. I wanted a way to still educate and uh, educate the things that I wanted to educate kids on when I was in the classroom that I didn't have the opportunity to do. Right. So, right. I love that. Yeah. And, and also your books are from levels PK to eighth grade. Is that correct? Yeah. I go as young as zero because I have ABC books as well, mm -hmm. but those, you know, those are usually zero to six. And then I have my, my country series, which includes Ukraine book, Ireland, Hungary, and Hawaii. And those are for middle grades between fourth and eighth grade. Oh, nice. Nice. That sounds really, that's, a, that's awesome. That is really awesome. So do your series help out any other like learning differences? I do focus on a lot on diversity and mm -hmm. inclusion of different cultures, mm -hmm. as well as children on the autism spectrum. My daughter is on the autism spectrum. And I also found out that I was on the spectrum in 2021 and got diagnosed at the age of 39 and um, <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah and I have since founded this company and uh absolutely love doing what I'm doing I can sit in my room and it's quiet you don't just really work. have to yeah you just work and you any idea honestly is a good idea Oh, like that's in, awesome in, for books like yeah. and I just have I have thousands of ideas 
in my head at once and I can only write um, so many of them, but, but there's just an endless list of opportunities of things that children should learn about and want to learn about and uh, would love to learn about. Um, I know. So there's just, you know, anything you can think of, you can write about for children. Oh, wow. And that's true. You know, uh, kids are so curious and they are just full of questions. They're probably the best people to talk to if you if you need creativity to do something they just like listen to them and they will like literally lead you to like probably your next book <laughs> the next creative Absolutely. I mean my daughter has given me so many ideas for different books and I take with them I take her ideas and I run with them I I do them Aww. And uh, she she actually has one book published under our company called Cats, and it's all her original illustrations. And she created the whole book, and I just put it into uh, the self-publishing format, and uh, we got it done. And she's a self-published author as well. Oh, <laughs> uh, I love that. So where can people, you know, find your books and connect with you? You can connect with me on all the social media platforms. I'm on Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all You're the everywhere. things. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm on all the things. And my website is slothdreamsbooks.com. Awesome. I actually had I have multiple websites, but that's that's the main one. And the other one is Sloth Dreams Publishing. Awesome. So, Very both cool. websites are the same. <laughs> Very cool. As we're wrapping up, Carrie Ann, what is like one takeaway you want to leave with our listeners today? I think that the main takeaway would be to check out, you know, self-published authors and and try to find other resources than just the mainstream with what's out there. There are a lot of great authors in the mainstream that have traditional publishing behind them. And of course, they have lots and lots and lots of money behind them. And of course, their books can become number one. But I think that self-published authors that are doing educational books for children really deserve a look and really des deserve to be in that spotlight because they have, you know, wonderful materials to, to offer homeschool families and and uh, public educators and school educators and preschool teachers. And they just have, there's just so many wonderful resources that we offer to the, to the educational space that I think uh, everyone should uh, take a look at not only my books, but take a look at other authors that are also writing children's books that are not in the mainstream. And I think that's really important to um, not only for children, but for uh, self-published authors as well. Yeah. And you also have a podcast, right? Where you have, do you read aloud books for kids on, on kids, Apple podcast? Yeah. So that's called sloths love to read. Awesome. And I have thousands of listeners to that uh, every month. Nice. And, uh, that's getting some traction there. That's fantastic. And you also have the slothdreamsbooks.com with some free resources on there. I do. I have free resources on there, you know, coloring pages, you know, sometimes I have recipes, coloring books. I'm going to be implementing lesson planning on there that go with books, some of my books that I have out. So that's coming soon. Also courses, and I'm going to be doing coaching and, um, I've become a self-publishing expert. So if you need your educational book published, I'm your person. Come oh, that's find me. <laughs> Fantastic. So Carrie Ann, it's been awesome having you on the podcast today. Thank you for sharing just all of your wisdom and your knowledge and just your, your life story with your daughter. Thank you so much. I really appreciate being here today. If you love the conversations we're having here on the Homeschool Advantage podcast, follow or subscribe our podcast to stay in the loop and never miss this amazing content. And please highly consider taking a minute to leave a positive rating and review to help others like you discover this show. 
See you next time.